it's hot man Whew. i need to grab a sweat rag because i'm gonna look disgusting it is one of those days it is a swamp ass day no that's for later <laughs> you just got a shot so we can do it before and after what Oh, you want to... Weirdo. It's not super hot today, but it's like 80 degrees, but uh, it's like an 80 degree dew point, I swear. Upper 70s dew point, it's so sticky. While we're back... Wait, oh. one thing for this video, if you're gonna be wiping your sweat, just don't do it while you're talking. Take pauses to do it. Yes, sir. While we're back on the Corvette, my friend had the exhaust repaired. And uh, first thing I did before we turned the camera on, I started it up just to see what it sounded like. Take a listen. Put my mic next to it. Absolutely, absolutely a misfire. No question about it. So I don't want to run this long because it does have new cats on it. One was clogged. Remember, that's why he cut the holes because he couldn't drive it. I know we had O2 issues. And in the last video, we really were focused on the O2s before we found the gaping holes in the exhaust. So I guess we can visit that very fast just to see what they look like. And then I'm going to start attacking this misfire right away. I don't want to let this car run long with this miss with the new cats. Let's make sure we have communication. We do no codes. Caleb edited the first part of this, and if you remember, and Caleb, you can refresh my memory because it's been a few weeks since we looked at this. We were really focused on the O2s and there was inactivity, right? Mm -hmm. And we focused on the bias voltage and I showed how to quickly identify its circuit integrity and things like that with the O2. I don't remember if I suggested he replace the oxygen sensors or not, but what we should see right away with these O2 sensors if they're working properly is this is a bias voltage we're looking at. Uh, as soon as I start this, in a relatively short period of time, they should become active. Because these are heated O2s. Ignore these big spikes you see it momentarily. This is a self-updating min-max scale. I don't like that they have not become active. They're still sitting at 450. In my opinion, that is not normal. And that's both sides. Uh, this is irrelevant to what the misfire is, is doing for us. I'm just trying to uh, pick back up where we left off. Yeah, I don't like that at all. We may have to revisit these oxygen sensors as far as function goes. Let's use the exhaust gas to heat them up a little bit. Just went into closed loop. The right O2 looks a lot better than the left O2. We definitely want to uh, uh, focus on the heater circuits on these, I think, at a later time. Just watching the activity of this. Let's look at our left and right integrator. That's our short-term fuel trim. 128 is zero. So I'm talking about that guy right there and that guy right there. Let me raise my RPM. Just want to use my O2 here as a guide on which side of the engine our misfire is on, if possible. Yeah, so the left side is adding a lot more fuel than the right side is. And you can look at the, the left here. Let me customize this for us. Left O2, right O2. So look at the, the block learn multiplier, left BLM, right BLM. Oh, these are backwards. That stinks. Left integrator. So left block learn, left integrator, right block learn, right integrator. Uh, short term, long term fuel trim is what those are. BLM, that's my long term. INT, that's my short term. 128 is zero. These are binary numbers. So the, the left block learn is adding a lot more fuel than the right block learn, the long term. Also, the left integrator, uh, it's kind of balanced out. There's a, a lot more hash in the left O2. And so what I'm getting at here, guys, look at these numbers in particular, pay attention to the block learn 
multiplier numbers now because we've had it running long enough. Um, the left side is absolutely showing an addition of fuel. So we're running leaner on the left side. We're adding more fuel. And remember, misfires are a false lean. And so what I'm saying, looking at these O2s, I have a misfire on my left side of the engine. It should be on this side. It should be based on the O2s. Um, as far as next step, I want to do this quick. And I can, on this design, we can do an RPM drop test right here. Got four injectors. That one's been rewired. So you see the rewiring of that. That one's been rewired, not sure why. But I'm just gonna do a real quick unplug it test of these four and see, see which one does not contribute. That one is. That one is. That one's not. Yep. And I, I can feel the injector firing. I can feel it. And this one. Tough to hear RPM drops on a V8. No change on that one. Let's go on the other side. In fact, because I think that cylinder is my miss, I'm gonna leave that injector unplugged. That'll help protect his cat while we're doing the rest of these. Yeah, so those are all hidden. I know the camera didn't pick that up very well. Absolutely no change on that. Should be cylinder three. Second one in. Let's just do a visual on this plug wire. See if it's like arcing or tough to see any of this. Um, unfortunately, I did not bring everything I needed today. I didn't bring in particular my secondary ignition adapter, which I really want to look at ignition now. I might be able to rig some stuff up from my Autel onto the Varus. Yeah, there's a coil wire over here on this side. I'm coming over there so we can look at all the cylinders. Yes, perfect. So I'll grab it right here at the coil wire. Hopefully this will work. All right, so um, I, just so you guys are clear, I mean, we could use the whole um, Autel kit, but this isn't about tool usage here. This is just about the tool that I have that will communicate with it, with this car, which is the Varus. I don't have OBD1 adapters for the Autel, so we're not using it, but I'm gonna use the Autel secondary ignition adapter. The problem is it's BNC, but thankfully my friends at AES have converters that will change BNC to the banana jack. And so that's the guy we're gonna use. And this should be able to work with my Varus and get us the signal we need. So let's go try it. Before I get too involved, let's do a clear flood crank and listen to the way the starter sounds to see if maybe we have a compression problem. I think we did that in the part one. I don't remember. No, we didn't do it. No? no? All right, gas it. pedal to the floor. Crank it over. Ah, uh, let's try that again. Sweet. We're gonna go on the coil wire with this. Hopefully we get a decent signal. Injectors plugged back in. It's one crappy looking waveform here but is it enough for me to see what I want to see is the question. Let's set this for detail. Pause that, zoom. Caleb, reach in, shut that off, please. We're on the main coil lead and uh, I'm just looking uh, for detail and repetition so we set the scope up for detail 
I think I might see it. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, let's see if I can move this over just a bit. You see this downward slope right here on this guy right here. That is not good. That is a shorted condition. That's a shorted plug or a shorted wire when we see that. Let's see if we see repetition on that. See, this is where the, the Pico reigns supreme when you're doing stuff like this. All right, so starting, let's see that downward. So there's that downward one I don't like. Let's move that over to the end of the screen and we'll see if we see that each time. All right, so see if your, your eyes are following mine. That downward spark line right there, that's, that, we'll count that as one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back to one. And see, I don't see it that time. I see it there, but I don't see it over here. Let's zoom in on that guy. Oh! <laughs> what did you just do? The radiator cap's right there. Yeah. It's hot. And I'm not seeing it each time on the same cylinder. I, I am seeing it. We're getting some. Uh, just some triggering issues typical of secondary ignition. I'm using a you know a probe from another kit, but that shouldn't matter you know, That's the one I'm looking at So count that one right there one two three four five six seven eight back to one so it is there twice I was gonna um, do a current ramp test on these fuel injectors next if I didn't see anything with the ignition. Uh, but let's see if we see this live again. Can you start that back up for me, Caleb? See, I'm, I really don't see it here. I mean, I see a short burn line on occasion, but that's every cylinder being drawn over top of each other. Uh, next thing we're going to do real quick is um, the low current probe of the fuel injector. Oh no. We stole my 9 volt battery out of this for something else. My battery's dead. Once again, the Pico would be helpful. The 4425A that has the probes that are self-powered. Dead. Hate troubleshooting when your batteries are dead. Dude, I can't you need to hire someone. Yeah, but I need the right guy. I need someone that can do the shit I do. Yeah. Oh. You're alright. Mike's right there. Oh. <laughs> we can bleep you. Huh? Bleep me. Danner up, needs man. help, man. We need we I need, need help. We need an A-Tech. I do. We, we I need do. an A-Tech here at this garage. So you guys that follow following along with me know. Diagnostic work is where the money is. And you heard what my brother just said. All this work that's coming his way, you know, is, is from him getting a reputation for fixing the cars. And uh, by fixing them, not being parts changers, being right, being accurate, replacing the right components, troubleshooting, diagnostics. You guys know that, it's where it's at. It's where it's always been, always. Shorted injector. That is a shorted injector. And it's not majorly shorted, but it absolutely is. The little straight up line right there, not good. We'll change our trigger to the trailing edge and then we'll compare. So that's my number three. This will be number, number one. See how much less the ramp is? This is great. This is great. And that explains why the secondary ignition waveform, I really couldn't see it. Now, if we did some snap throttle tests, we may be able to see uh, some lean conditions, but I, I don't care about the secondary. I was having trouble with that. We'll call that a known good for the number one. Number three, absolutely a shorted injector. Should be cylinder five. That one's starting to short. You see the straight up line there right at the beginning. This is the one where you do them all do all of them that's a good one let's go to the other side this is a group fired injection system that's a good one 
That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one too. The ramp's a little low on that one, but yeah. So two on the other side, exactly what our trim showed us. In particular, at number three. And these will get worse too as they heat up. We do not want to run this thing long. This next test is for you Corvette guys out there that are following this and maybe you don't have a lab scope to find a shorted injector like I just showed you. So all you need is a multimeter and we're gonna pick ohms. We're gonna go the digital meter because all we need is the number. And from memory, these injectors should be 12.6 ohms a piece and uh, you definitely want to check them at different temperatures because they'll change. Sometimes they'll be good when they're cold and then as they heat up, they'll be worse and it can be opposite too. Yeah, 7.9 ohms is not good. Uh, that shows our shorted condition and uh, we'll compare that to the number one. If I remember right, the number one was good. 12.4 ohms. Check them all for you guys. I think it was this one was slightly shorted too. So we'll just do them all down the line, just for everyone viewing. 12.4, this next one was 7.9. That was my shorted one. Next one, I, I believe this was also partially shorting or starting to short. I expect that to be a little bit less. Yep, 10.3. So these resistance readings are matching what we saw with the amperage waveform. Lower the resistance, higher the amperage waveform. 12.6. Let's go to the other side. And this is a group fired injection system, old school. I put some links in the description and in the little um, cards in this video for other group fired injection system videos I've done. I have some classroom lectures here too, right here on YouTube where I'm showing how to test for these and why a single on this design. This is the interesting part with these a single shorted fuel injector can make this engine be a no start from one shorted injector. 12.6 on that one. Twelve sixty-four. So this is what you Corvette guys can do. Just measure them across the board. If you find yourself stranded somewhere, what you can do if the car is a no start and you suspect a shorted injector, you can unplug injectors one at a time until the car starts and then leave that injector unplugged to get you home. And uh, that's what you'll see with these. Two shorted injectors, one really bad. And that one shorted injector, believe it or not, will affect all the other cylinders. So it's more than just a spray problem with the number three. It's gonna be across the board because it starts to steal current from the other injectors. That's the short answer as to why uh, it will have that kind of running problem. I'm not going to worry about an injector balance test and proving a flow issue. It is absolutely not necessary in particular because of that characteristic I just mentioned, which is it will affect the other injectors because it's one driver fires them all. My friend Rick, who owns this, Rick Schneider, uh, he is a carpenter. He actually built my back porch. I prepped him for shorted injectors on this car. He went out and bought some Excels. Um, you can't get these from the factory anymore, I believe. Way too old. And what I asked him uh, in particular, I said, did you make sure that these injectors were the exact replacements for this? They're, they're not like bigger injectors, higher flow injectors. He said, no, these are the factory injectors. And I said, good. So he's got a set of eight fuel injectors for this. We will get another final piece for you, a final running of this engine. That's pretty much it as far as identifying shorted injectors. It was nice to be able to see at least the ignition waveforms in that um, I, I was not seeing a consistent misfire i know we saw some of those downward spark lines but that can also be from flooded conditions and that very may well be what's going on here with that injector it's not spraying right flooding out the number three plug and that can give you that downward slope 
There's other things you can do, of course, which is injector balance. We can do that. However, um, that may end up not being fruitful uh, in showing us a problem because I'm using a external timer that would only be firing one injector at a time and not as a group, which is the way this is done. And again, with one shorted injector in a group, it steals current from the other injectors. And so uh, injector balance tests, I'm not gonna do it. I, in particular, because I feel like it's gonna add more questions than answers should I choose uh, to do the balance test. I'm just not going to, it's not necessary. It is a test, it is not the test. Uh, I'll put some videos on injector balance testing in here so you guys understand what I'm talking about. And again, some other videos for shorted fuel injectors. No starts from one shorted fuel injector. Crazy stuff with this system. Injectors are in um, and we have one clip that was missing that the owner is made aware of. He needs to get a clip for the injector. My brother had a clip off of another rail we used to hold it and then we were able to zip tie that to the rail and that's this last injector right here on this side. Um, it's not ideal, um, but it keeps the injector from pushing downward because these injectors have movement and they can actually pop out and then leak without clips. So the clips need to be there. I'm a little bit concerned because these injectors are slightly shorter and so we pulled them out of the rail a little bit. It's a bore, like picture a bore about that long and then that O-ring can sit anywhere in there and not leak. With the factory injectors, the O-ring is about in the center. And now with the aftermarket O-ring where the clip grooves are, it's down lower. And so that injector has the potential to push out without those clips. They need to be there. It's important. Safety issue. But, you know, they don't make these parts from the factory anymore. And so this is what we got. I'm going to start it. It should sound a lot better. So let me just get our data up here before we even start it. All righty. Fire in the hole, hopefully. Oh yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if you can tell. I didn't leave any vacuum hoses off. Let's get a look at these trim numbers. I feel like there's something else going on here still. That's not as smooth of an idle as I'd like to see. There's something going on in this left side. Look at that left side O2. still hear a miss. We'll come back to these numbers in a second. We have another problem with this. Of course we do, Caleb. You know? Just want to show the waveforms of these injectors. Let's make sure they look okay. There's still a miss on this thing, Danner. I'm I don't know. I missed something. I couldn't see the ignition all that well. Like I did see a downward spark line on the one. I'm coming on the other side here, Caleb. Amperage looks great on the on the injectors, so they're all right. But we definitely have another problem. I don't know. I feel like I want to test drive this. See what it feels like on a test drive. Oh, it feels so nice though on the road. So much better. It's 
possible that we're dealing with some fouled plugs from it running poorly for a while. It's also possible we have another problem that I missed. I need to be careful too, see how dry rotted the tires were. Yeah. Last thing we need is a freaking high speed blowout. Feels good. I don't feel a miss. I just want these block layer and multiplier and integrator numbers to look better than what they did. Could be a vacuum leak too. I, st I have to analyze the numbers. I didn't really get a chance to see them. So it's got good power. It's not misfiring under load, but there is absolutely an idle issue. And uh, I need to analyze these numbers here when we get back to my brother's shop. It looked like maybe it was running rich on bank one or the right bank. Yeah, 108 is low. That's taking fuel away. It's opposite of what we had before. 118 is low as well on the left bank, right bank at 108. That's a lean command. That means it's running rich. And so now, you know, you have to quite you have to question the injectors we had that we just put in. Do you know? Like, did we just put higher flow injectors in? I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going by what Rick told me, and he said absolutely not, and I believe him, but I'm not sure that I believe the person that he bought it from. Let's see, map voltage, 1.3, looks good, manifold temp, throttle, zero. My IAC position is at three. It's like the equivalent of like minus 20%. Let's go make, let's go see if this fuel pressure regulator is leaking. Cause that would be sweet. If it was, it'd be nice and easy. So fuel pressure regulator, what we're looking for here is see if fuel, we'll see if fuel runs out of the end of that in a minute. I think we're good there. The other one would be the purge valve. Yeah, 108, 115, I don't like it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pinch the purge line off that comes from the tank. See if we have any change on our trims. Nope, not really. So it's not purge related. There's not a whole lot that'll make this engine run a little bit on the rich side. You know, you gotta, you gotta consider the injectors. Dust smells pretty clean. I got a torn hose right there to my regulator that'll increase my fuel pressure a little bit so let's fix that small hole single wire o2s i gotta remember that this is old school single wire o2s they'll cool off so we want to raise the rpm about that I forgot I'm not mic'd up we're using the camera mic what I was just saying to myself is at the higher rpm our block learn on the left side looked great the right side was still taking fuel away and I also said before I, I opened the throttle that these single wire O2s will cool off so I just wanted to make sure my O2s were hot this is not a misfire like it was before have a rich condition at idle in particular it's better at higher rpms it's more rich on the right bank than it is on the left purge valve does go in on that side but that should be all of them they yeah, don't like 108 at all on the right side what else makes it run rich not a lot purge valve talked about that pinch it off again so 108 115 on the right side Pinch 
pinch the PCV line off. I have the breather opened up on the other side. That'll give me an indication of like if my oil's contaminated. Oh yeah, totally. Huge improvement. We're up to 112 from 108 on the on the uh, right block learn. 122 on the left side, I like that. I hear a little, little bit of valve train noise on occasion maybe. We'll let him drive it. Have to tell me what he thinks. I don't like the long-term numbers. I, I, it should be better than that. The misfire is gone, but I'm not gonna get lost in a, in a 92 system with a slight rich condition at idle. All right, just a couple of uh, observations. Number one, our O2s are at stoichiometric. They are moving up and down. The computer's compensated for this slight rich condition that we have. I wanna watch this at a higher RPM again. So right now I'm at 850 RPM. Let's hold this up to 2500. It, it looks really good on the left bank at 2500. Uh, 128 is stoichiometric on the long term. Really focus on the long term, which is the block learn multiplier, the BLM. Even at 2500, we still have a condition on the right bank that is um, a little bit rich. Computer's taking some fuel away. Let's go 3000. Left bank looks great at 132 on the block learn. But I don't like 117 on the on the right side. There, there is something that is making the right side run a little bit richer than the left side. Can you do valve adjustments on these old engines? Do they ever need the valves adjusted? I don't know. Like your Nova, like would it be wouldn't it be the same like rocker arm setup and everything? Well, I just have a slight rich condition on the right bank. It's not a misfire. The ignition's fine, fuel's fine. But like at 3,000 RPM, I'm, I got a 118 on the block learn. I'm just being picky. Yeah. But Did your like lumpiness go away after you beat it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really feel. Yeah, because before I could hear it. And even when you revved it, it was like. Bup, 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 bup. Yeah, that's not. I don't hear it anymore. Yeah, I mean, it felt great on the road. But I don't like the that the right side block learn. See, we're at 108. I don't like that. 128 was zero, yeah. numbers below 128 is taking fuel away. So a 108 number, that's equivalent to like a minus 20% fuel yeah. trip. That's pretty substantial. And I pinched the PCV, no real change. Pulled the uh, uh, breather out of the one side, no real change there. I just, I'm just gonna tell him to drive it. I don't think this is gonna make his, his cats plug up which is in, which is the most important part for him because they're brand new cats. It has been compensated for. You see the O2s are moving. Yeah. Um, actually, it's both banks, really. 108 and 112. But it's more... No fuel regulator stuff? No, I, check, I, put, I checked the fuel regulator. Um, and it is on, on that side. I mean, that'd be worth maybe looking at again. But the right side is definitely running... Richer than it should. Richer than it should. I'm going to tell him to drive it do an oil change on it if he hasn't recently yeah and then drive it and then That's all. go from there i'm not gonna get i'm not gonna go around in circles looking for this i i checked the basics pcv fuel pressure regulator all right yeah so uh, not a great uh final for you guys but we're leaving it go with this for right now i'm gonna have my friend drive it do an oil change on it uh, there was one other thing I was thinking of while we're in here. Display data and road test. It's just weird. Um, some of these older systems and the way they collected data where the scan tool can mess things up um, as far as your data parameters go. But I mean, it could even be like timing chain slack and stuff like that, that, that you know, mechanical conditions that is not gonna fix, just have him drive it. So we're parking this. Rick, drive the Corvette, change your oil. I don't like the slight rich condition we have, but I've checked all of the basics that would make this engine run rich. 
so I'm leaning more towards maybe a mechanical issue. For you Corvette guys out there, definitely a lesson learned for shorted injectors. Now you know what to look for. And uh, hope, hopefully you guys learned something from this. Maybe we'll have a follow-up down the road as far as numbers go. Probably not. Uh, maybe through Facebook or something we can, we can talk about it. But that's it for us today, guys. Thanks for joining us. Caleb, thanks for being cameraman. Rick, thanks for letting us use your car for a nice case study. We'll catch you guys next time.